Hey, what's up guys? This is Anthony from Anthony's Customs, and for this video, we're going to be reviewing the new Power Rangers movie. So, this one is going to be, I think, a controversial topic to review this movie because Power Rangers has one of those fan bases where some of the fans are extremely hardcore. Now that's not necessarily a bad thing, but I think we need to come to a movie like this, a reboot like this, with an open mind. You can't necessarily say it's good and you can't necessarily say it's bad because of what it is either way. We need to we need to be open about it and that's what we're going to do. We're going to talk about the good and the bad and I'll give you my final verdict. I'll point out now, I'm not going to mention any spoilers though, there's really not much to spoil, and that's kind of a spoiler in and of itself. There's not a lot to this movie that we don't know from the trailers. Uh, but I will avoid all spoilers of anything that I can even remotely consider a spoiler, I think, uh, until I'll tell you at the end of the video, okay, I'm going to talk about the ending and the spoilers, so click away if you don't want to see them. Okay, so pay attention for that. First thing we need to talk about is the plot of this movie. What kind of reboot is it? Is it a continuation slash reboot? Is it a total reboot? Is it an alternate timeline? What is happening? What's the premise of the movie? Well, it's definitely a reboot. It doesn't appear to me to be directly connected to any of the other uh, timelines or universes or anything like that. It's its own thing. Okay, so it's not like a continuation or anything like that. In fact, it does change quite a bit of the fiction surrounding the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, though that is what it's based on. It is definitely the classic Power Rangers. It takes a tiny bit from, from the Japanese version, which is what the American version was based on, but those were very drastically different shows, and this is definitely more along the lines of the American version, the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. The premise for this does give us Rita as the bad guy, Rita Repulsa. So we know that this is basically going to follow the, the storyline of the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, but they change a lot of things about it. We were speculating in previous videos that uh, Rita would be an ex-ranger of some sort, possibly the Green Ranger, based on her outfit and based on her little power coin in her Loki staff. It's it's kind of a spoiler to say this, but it's, it's really not because it was so blatantly obvious. Yes, that's the case. And you find out within like the first 30 seconds of the movie that that's true. So it's not really a spoiler. So if you get mad at me about that, I'm sorry. But it's it was pretty much inevitable. We knew that was the case. So a totally different story for her. Now, they do give her kind of this crazy evil direction. And it's not necessarily a good thing or a bad thing, but it does draw from the Japanese version where she's an evil witch who deals with Satan and or great Satan or whatever. So it, it does kind of draw from that, but she's still kind of the Rita we know in, in some of the things she says and some of the things she does. But mostly it's kind of like this new take that's kind of a mix of the other two. And definitely a new thing because now she's an ex-ranger, obviously, who is now totally evil. So uh, that's the basic premise for her being a bad guy. Uh, Zordon is still Zordon. He's still kind of the big floating head, only this time he's in the wall, which is kind of a nice new take on that. That's fine. Uh, I feel like they probably didn't need to spend so much budget on that and could have put the money somewhere else, but it's fine. But Zordon, in this case, is an ex-Power Ranger also. Uh, not only that he fought Rita like we've heard before, but he was actually a ranger and she was a ranger and she went bad and had to fight the other Power Rangers and she beat them and he died and now he's the floating head. Not in a time vortex like the uh, Power Ranger story from before, it's something slightly different, but for all intents and purposes it's the same thing except now he's an ex-ranger and the fiction behind the morphers and the coins and everything not the same, because he didn't make those after becoming a head. Those things were already in existence. I mean, they were already rangers before he died and she went bad and also died 65 million years ago. Uh, that's when it all happened, and then we jumped to now. So the coins and everything existed. We don't really have any information about those, which is kind of interesting. We'll have to, we'll have to go into that, I think, in future movies, hopefully. Uh, so yeah, so we have Rita and, and Zordon different backstories but generally the same motives and things and we have teenagers who find the coins and become the power rangers to stop rita so generally the same plot just with different details behind those things another interesting thing about the plot is that it does mix from different storylines in the power rangers soon after the mighty morphin power ranger storyline kind of wrapped up and they started to move on they introduced the whole zeo crystal thing which was 
Uh, not exactly how we saw it in this movie, but uh, it, it definitely feels like it's going to be drawing from the different storylines to kind of condense all of these different years, decades of shows into, I think they said there's like a plan for five movies or something like that. So they're going to be kind of just doing an overarching thing that's going to probably draw from different things. It'll be interesting to see how they do it. And I'm imagining they're going to want to keep the same cast on, but who knows? So we'll see. But they do have a couple of hints here and there of the different storylines. It's not directly Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. We'll see how that goes. So next thing to talk about is the writing. Is the writing good? This was going to be a big issue because everybody knows the Power Rangers writing was never exactly the the, the deepest, the best writing. It, it was often very campy and cheesy. It was a kid's show, and it was supposed to be campy and cheesy. I, I think it worked okay for the show back then. I mean, I've rewatched it, and it's not anything I'm interested in watching now in terms of the storytelling, but I can still appreciate it for what it was. You know, it's almost, it's like the kid's version of um, The Evil Dead. It's, it's very campy. So it, it's supposed to be that way. So was this movie going to be that, or was it going to be that serious version that we've all been hoping for? It did get a PG-13 rating. Is that going to make it a ser more serious movie? The answer is not really, uh, but it's not campy either. So it doesn't have the campy writing, and it doesn't have like a really serious note to it. It just kind of has this, they kind of like just toe the line, and you're not really sure what their, what their aim is, what kind of mood is it. I don't know. I feel like the writing just wasn't great. I kind of feel like they weren't sure what they wanted to do. They wanted to play it safe, and you ended up with something that was somewhat... I don't know, it was kind of like uninspired. It felt kind of lifeless. I, I guess, I'm not sure. I'm not sure how to describe it. It didn't have enough of the camp, because it really didn't have any. It didn't have any real grit to it. It was just kind of like this commercial movie. I don't know if that makes any sense. Hopefully you guys get what I'm saying. I'm curious if you thought the same thing if you've already seen it. Or if not, go watch it and then come back and we'll talk. But I just, I felt like the writing wasn't sure what it wanted to be and I guess that's a good way of putting it. That does go into the dialogue. Also, a lot of the dialogue in this movie is just really weird. It's really awkward. It's not such that it's going to really destroy the, the watching experience or anything like that, but it, it is a little bit... I don't know. It's just something off about it like a lot of the conversations that happen in the movie just feel weird they don't really make that much sense for instance you guys already know there there's kind of like this breakfast breakfast club thing where they're all in detention well jason so jason gets in trouble and he's in his dad's truck his dad's dropping him off for detention and they have this exchange where it's like showing us that jason doesn't quite get along with his dad and his dad wants him to do all this stuff and jason's just screwing up and stuff but the, the way they're talking and the, what, the things they're saying, it just doesn't really fit. Like, Jason just did something that could have gotten himself killed, and his dad's saying, like, I don't understand how you could keep screwing up. I don't think we're ever going to understand each other. That, understand what? He did something stupid and got himself in trouble. So what is it that you need to understand? And then Jason's like, I don't understand why you don't understand. I mean, he doesn't say that, but it's just like, you should understand that you just almost died from doing something stupid and that's why your dad is mad like I feel like they really had to force this angstiness on some of these characters and it just didn't really need to be there and so the writing was very weird I think I think that's the best way of putting it again it's kind of weird another example of just where the writing felt odd was uh so you guys saw in the trailer the time the bully's trying to like pick on Billy and he tries to hit, I think he headbutts him and he falls over and everybody's like hey Billy knocked out the bully that was cool and like but what leads to that is the bully comes over he's like I'm gonna snap your wrist that doesn't happen in real life. First of all, what, this, this bully knows how to just walk up and snap someone's wrist. He's like, I'm going to snap it. And he's trying to snap his wrist. And he can't because he's got Power Ranger juice. But, like, that's... It's totally weird. It wasn't, like, campy weird. It was just weird. I don't know. There's lots of instances like that. But it, it doesn't really kill the movie. It's just... Throughout, you're kind of like, that's that's weird. No, that's weird. Or, or another instance is when uh, Trini, the Yellow Ranger, tells her parents, I think I'm a superhero. And her mom says, now pee in that cup. And it was supposed to be like a funny line, and I guess it kind of landed for the younger audience. But why does she have a, a, a cup for a urine sample and nobody would do that just because their daughter said that? It's just weird. Again, not necessarily terrible, but just weird. 
the worst thing though we have to, I have to mention this because this for, to me was a really really big deal and, and I'm, I'm sure people are gonna say oh you're just a prude or you don't like funny stuff or whatever but I don't care because this doesn't this did not fit in the movie at all and it happened almost instantly so in the very start of the movie it opens up with Zordon and Rita back 65 million years ago that wraps up in a couple of minutes and then it cuts to Jason doing this prank with his buddy that ends up getting him in trouble and into the detention so during this prank they're bringing a bull into the school locker room and there's a joke about milking the cow the, the kid milked the cow or something like that and Jason's like dude this is a bull and so it ends up being this particularly graphic and vulgar joke you guys can guess what I'm talking about if you haven't seen it uh, but it gets particular. I mean, it's not a, like a long conversation, but it for being a PG-13 movie, especially a Power Rangers movie, and especially on basically the opening note, it was exceptionally crude. And to me, that killed a lot of the momentum going in. I was automatically turned off to the movie because of that. Now, if this was a uh, Hangover movie, I would have expected it. It would have been probably still not funny, but it would have been understandable but in this movie it just totally like as soon as you get started Zordon dies Rita dies the coins are there cool Power Rangers joke about that and it just kills it takes it takes all the wind out of the sails so for me that was a terrible terrible uh, writing choice and that's really the only instance of that there are a couple other tiny things but that one just to me like did, has nobody learned from Michael Bay's humor that it doesn't work on these classic franchises? Like, I know this wasn't Michael Bay, but it was that kind of thing. So, I don't know. That really bugged me. I'm curious what you guys think about that. But even the lady next to me, I pointed. She's not there now. She was there in the movie theater. She asked me. She leans over. She's like, is this a PG-13 movie? Or what, what is this? I'm like, I, I guess. I don't know. I, I was sure that it was, but I didn't want to have a conversation in the theater. But even for PG-13, it seemed particularly graphic. I don't know. It just, it was very weird and off-putting. I didn't care for that very much. Okay, so now, all of that aside, let's talk about the casting. Obviously, we have all new Rangers, uh, slightly different shuffling of roles, you know, because they didn't want to follow that uh, maybe coincidental uh, color choices for the characters. and It was all fine. I didn't mind the characters at all. In fact, Billy shined as a character, whereas in the first show, he was probably not, not the most likable, not the most relatable. He was a very nice character. Uh, once you get past all of these things that make these kids oddballs or whatever, because it felt kind of forced in some cases, especially Kimberly, I didn't get that whole thing at all. Like, that doesn't sound like a big deal, but whatever. Anyway, once you get past all that, they were all pretty likable and relatable, and they seemed like nice enough kids that just had bad situations, I guess. So I thought it was fine. They did a good job. The acting all felt pretty good. Uh, they they seem to take the role seriously. I think for some of them this was like their first big acting role and, and they all did a good job. They really carried themselves appropriately for the role. I thought it was good. No real problems there. For Elizabeth Banks, I don't know. There was something weird about Rita and I'm not sure if it's that they went with this really kind of like twisted evil role in, in a somewhat otherwise neutral movie. It was... She felt out of place almost every time she was on screen, and I'm not sure if it's because she didn't take the role seriously, or if the writing wasn't sure how to handle it, but the, the movie was very neutral in terms of tone. It wasn't like a happy movie, necessarily. It wasn't a dark and gritty movie. It wasn't much in any real direction. It was just kind of like, this is the story of these characters becoming the Power Rangers. But then every time she was on screen, she was kind of weird and campy, but not really campy and just... Not sure. Not sure. Didn't care for it, to be honest. I was really looking forward to see her as Rita in this kind of Green Ranger type role, evil Green Ranger, but not like crazy evil. It just it just felt weird, and I don't think I liked it that much. I don't think it, I don't know if it was her fault, but something was off about that character. You, let, you guys can let me know what you thought about that. Then Brian Cranston and... Um, I can't think of the guy's name. The guy who did uh, Alpha 5. They were fine. Alpha was fine. The new look for Alpha didn't bother me at all. I thought it was going to be a lot weirder, but it was fine. It didn't make a difference. His lines were minimal, but uh, comical as they needed to be. He wasn't anywhere near as crazy as in the TV show, so that was a good thing. And then Zordon, Brian Cranston, it was fine. It was, I was expecting a little bit more gravitas with this Zordon with Brian Cranston, but I, looking back on the original show, I think they did a good mixture of keeping him kind of serious, but kind of lighthearted at the same time. So I thought that was pretty good too. So it is a Power Rangers movie, so there has to be some kind of action. It's, it revolves around martial arts, right? So 
uh, when they cast the original show, a, a lot of the people could actually do martial arts. So it made sense that they were able to do some of these things without their gear on. And then when they had the gear on, obviously it wasn't them most of the time. It was the, the Japanese stunt guys doing the action. But it made sense. You, you could believe that these people were doing these things. In this movie, they're not supposed to know martial arts ahead of time. And I don't believe any of the actors did. Uh, it didn't look like it anyway. I think I think uh, Zach the Black Ranger did actually. I'm pretty sure he does action stuff in China, but I could be wrong about that. Anyway, they have to go through this training process before they can actually morph and become rangers. So they there's kind of like this rocky build up montage of them training. It doesn't really have any emotion to it. To me, it felt very flat, and it got really iffy with the pacing. That whole middle section of the movie just kind of dragged. It is a two-hour movie, and I've heard that it was originally shot to be three hours and they had to cut a cu bunch of content. I don't know, man. It felt long in the middle part of the movie, so the training part didn't really work for me. And then once they do finally morph, you've basically seen it all in the trailers. It's a very short period of time once they have their, their Power Ranger outfits on. So... Uh, there was almost no action with them being in their normal clothes, or normal people. And then once they're in their Power Ranger suits, you can tell that since you've... I would say it's maybe double what the trailer showed, and then that's it for the action. Maybe triple at most, because trailers are obviously very cut up. It's very, very little action. It wasn't necessarily bad, but I think I mentioned even in my one uh, trailer discussion video, I can't wait to see this action now that they're, it's all CGI. It can get, they can get to some pretty cool martial arts stuff with the putties and things. It didn't really happen. It was very reminiscent of the very first episode of the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers in the amount of fighting and stuff, but that was the same amount of fighting in a 20-minute episode rather than a two-hour movie. It just kind of left me wanting. And then when it goes to the action, obviously once they're, they morph and they're fighting hand-to-hand -hand for a little bit, they use their Zords. And the action for the Zords isn't bad. I don't know if they could do much better with animal-shaped Zords. I mean, how much can a Triceratops do? But that's not really our problem. That's their problem. They have the Zords fighting these putties, which don't really make sense because the Zords don't really need to fight putties at all. At least they never did before. So they pulled an Ultron and just threw a billion of them at them to fight the Zords, which... Is fine, but it doesn't make for the most interesting scenes. And, and then, obviously, Goldar. We saw that from the trailer, so he's this giant golden person with wings. Not the Goldar we know at all. Uh, and so the Zords are fighting Goldar, ineffectively, and it still just didn't become interesting. I don't know when these movie people are going to realize that faceless enemies, generic-looking enemies, don't make for good movies. And that's generally the issue here. There wasn't a whole lot of interesting action to happen at all and then you guys already saw it in the trailers they do turn into megazord but in the original show they explained that the zords can combine to make megazord and then you can fight even stronger this happened on accident the zords just kind of did it automatically nobody really said anything other than like hey now we're megazord and then the action for megazord was almost exactly what you saw in the trailers i mean there was only one punch in the trailer but take that add a couple of extra punches that was it. It was just the action did not deliver for me. I was expecting with this with a forty million dollar budget, I was expecting a lot more action. We didn't get it, and I, I mean I say that because it, CGI is going to be expensive for that action. I was expecting there would be more of it, and there just really wasn't. So it was a little bit disappointing. So that leads me to the next thing, which is the CGI. Was it any good? Most of the time, it was good. In a lot of cases, it was good, like the spaceship and, and Zordon. And even them morphing and that kind of thing, it all looked really good. Uh, I have to say, I think the Zords did not look very good. Not design-wise, though that's true too. Uh, a lot of the time, the Zords looked very green screeny, very unrefined. I don't know what it was. Maybe, I don't know. It, it reminded me a lot of the original Transformers, but with less quality in the CGI. I'm sure their budget, I'm sure Transformers had a much larger budget. I don't remember offhand, but it just felt a little lacking in some scenes. You'll know what I'm talking about when you see it. Some scenes it looks great. Goldar, for instance, looks really good. But uh, a lot of the CGI just didn't do it for me. A lot of them being in, in the pilot seats 
it looked like they were in fake seats with CGI around them. I don't know. It just didn't didn't stand out as being impressive, and I guess they didn't necessarily need it to be since this is marketed more toward kids, but it just didn't deliver that much. So the last thing I want to mention is just about the Zord designs. I already told you I think uh, Megazord, in my previous videos, I thought Megazord would look really, really bad, and it did. It doesn't even look remotely like the Zords combined to be Megazord. There's a whole lot of extra body mass there. And it just looks nothing like a good character design at all. The Zords themselves are okay in that they don't look terrible, but really just the T-Rex and the Sabertooth Tiger were recognizable. You have the Mastodon, but it had six or eight legs, and the trunk was a gun turret, so it just didn't look like a Mastodon. I kept, it, I kept thinking it was like a beetle of some sort, which I don't think it was. I'm pretty sure it was still a Mastodon. They don't really say and the Triceratops, every once in a while it kind of looked like a Triceratops, but most of the time it didn't. And I'm pretty sure it had extra legs too. So, or And the Pterodactyl looked just like a pink space jet. Didn't really look like a Pterodactyl, so I, I don't know. I feel like the designs were just kind of gen generalized, commercialized, to be more acceptable for a broader audience. I, I don't know. My final verdict is, if you're a Power Rangers fan, you are probably going to enjoy watching it. If you're not a Power Rangers fan at all, then you're probably not going to like it very much. And if you're just neutral, then it's going to be just be okay. So it, it's, I think the critic reviews got it right. I think the fan reviews got it right. And if you meet somewhere in the middle, that's where the true unbiased take is on it. So it's, it's okay. It's not very good. It's not very bad. It's just okay. Okay, so now we're going to get to the spoiler part. So if you haven't seen the movie yet, stop watching. Come back after you've seen the movie, that way you don't get spoiled by what I'm about to say, though it's really not much of a shock, okay? Okay, starting now. So, Power Rangers get into the Megazord, they punch Goldar a few times, uh, he kind of dies, Rita gets upset, Rita attacks Megazord thinking she can do something, Megazord slaps her into space. Literally. <sighs> what? No, that's silly. And that's coming from a person who understands that this is Power Rangers. It can be silly, but it did not match the rest of the tone. He smacked her into outer space. Literally. That's just so ridiculous. Now that does show her not actually dying, just freezing. So obviously there is a potential for her to come back. And there's obviously some storyline with the moon and Rita being, you know, from the original Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. So... They do show the moon in the background as she's kind of floating, but it was super anticlimactic. I did not like the action sequences, and I did not like the way it all wrapped up, so that was super not great for me. Uh, and then, that was it. That's the end, basically. They're, they're done, so they're going to go back to being Power Rangers if they need to in the future. That's how, the, how it's kind of left. And then the post credit scene. Well, it's actually like mid credits. There's nothing at the very end. They're back in detention. And uh, the the teacher's calling out names and he's calling for Tommy Oliver. So, and then the pans to like a green jacket. So, cool. Green Ranger. Nice. Uh, we kind of expected that already. I mean, we already had Rita being the Green Ranger and her power coin still exists. So, it's, it's fine. It's a, nice, it's a nice sequence. But the thing that really got me, and I didn't want to mention this prior in the video because it is kind of a, a nice little surprise if you haven't already heard... They do have uh, Jason David Frank, and I can't think of Kimberly's name right now, but uh, Tommy and Kimberly from the original series are amongst the city people that are taking pictures of Megazord at the end. They're like, oh, cool, what's that? And then it's th the two of them are in there, so I thought that was kind of a nice nod to the audience. And there's lots of other things that are good in the movie. Like, uh, I, didn't, I wanted to save this too because I was happy to see this happen, but when the Zords do come on screen at one point, it's very reminiscent of the original scene when that happens, and they even play the Go Go Power, not Go Go Power Rangers, Mighty Morphin, whatever the theme song is. I can't, I can't do it. I can't sing it, so I'm gonna keep screwing it up. But the theme song, when the like the action sequence theme song from the original show, they played that, and it was awesome. But then it was just like over, done, very awkwardly inserted into the movie. Needed more of that throughout the movie. Would have been great, but it was really nice to have it in there for a split second. It was cool. So there it is, guys. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you thought about the movie. Let's talk about all these things in the comment section below. Let me know which Power Rangers season or series is your favorite. I am definitely a Mighty Morphin Power Rangers kind of guy. But if you like Zeo or Space or whatever, let me know. Let's talk about that. Also, who's your favorite Ranger? For me, definitely Green Ranger. 
All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Turn on notifications so you can keep watching all my videos. I have new stuff up every single day. So make sure you come back for that. And I'll see you next time.